Many eyewitnesses have told of a large, hairy, man-like creature haunting the backwoods of California in all parts of the state. From the north to the central, country that abounds in timber and draws a heavy summer population of vacationers. Chances are that the real number of such sightings is higher than what is reported to the authorities, as many witnesses are not even aware of the procedure to document such an experience. Though it crosses one's mind at times of such an experience, but actually making a report is very few. Notably, the retrieved footprints report much higher in the northwesternmost part of Northern California, near the Oregon border, including notable areas like Humboldt Forest, Bluff Creek, and Willow Creek. The reasons for this concentration of reports remain speculative and run the gamut from increased outdoor recreational activities to the rich history of Bigfoot lore in the area. Even in recent years, alleged sightings of these beings have taken off in the region of Mount Shasta and added even more to the mystery. In 1956, Mrs. J. Pomray observed a Bigfoot crossing Interstate 5 just north of Mount Shasta. During the summer of 1962, Bonnie Feldman claimed to witness a female Bigfoot giving birth near the base of a pine tree on the eastern side of Mount Shasta. In 1963, a man fell off a bluff while deer hunting near Mount Shasta and was rescued by a nine-foot Bigfoot. In July 1973, a naturalist observed an eight-foot Bigfoot for 45 minutes in the Castle Craggy Mountains. In the same year, a young girl was alone in a cabin in the Mount Shasta area while her family went to the store. She was in the kitchen and saw a large Bigfoot walk by. Quincy, California near the Feather River, Plumas County, Lassen Shasta area, I was just up by Quincy, California driving along in my new pickup when out of the trees jumped what I thought was a gorilla. But then when it froze in front of me I realized that gorillas are not 7 plus feet tall, and they do not walk like a man. I could not believe what I was seeing, I got out of my pickup because it was nearing sunset, and I could not see him that well because I had been off-roading all day, and my windshield had mud all over it. I took my gun with me because it was at least 400 pounds that is 250 pounds more than me, and I was scared for my life, but no, that did not stop me. Bigfoot then walked into the woods with great strides, at least six foot strides. I then got into my truck again and left for it was seven o'clock at night. I only saw Bigfoot for a total of about three minutes before he left. Redding, Shasta County, California, April 8th, 1997. You are not going to believe what happened to me this morning. I went out to my usual hunting spot in Tahama County for turkey this morning, didn't shoot any, but saw two. I heard a Sasquatch making a territorial howl. The howls sounded exactly like the one in the tape and the recordings. I heard it and first thought it might be coyotes, but when I turned my game ear up, a listening device for hunting a lot, like a hearing aid, I heard it and there was no mistaking what it was. I mean, I was shocked, scared, and surprised. I can't believe how precise it sounded to the howl on the tape. I got home and listened to it again and again. God, I wish I had had a tape recorder. There were coyotes howling along with it, but they sounded far more different. When I heard it, it sounded pretty far away, a mile or more at least. I tried to imitate it to see if I could get a response, but then I realized, hey, this is a territorial call. What if I piss it off and it comes looking for me? So I jumped into my truck and locked the door. Big chicken, huh? I was so jazzed up that when my gun fell on the floor in my truck I screamed, I mean this thing had me pumped. I plan on going out in the area that I think I heard the call from and trying to tape record it and maybe I can find out exactly where this one is located. I wonder if it's not the same one I saw last year. Oh, by the way, it was about between 4.30, 5 in the morning when I heard the howl. Man, this howl roused just about everything after it quit. The coyotes carried on for a bit and then a few turkeys started gobbling and it wasn't even dawn yet. I wonder just what effect the howl has towards other animals. I mean, it started them going when I myself could not generate a response through calls of my own howl calls, that is. Maybe I can get an opinion or some ideas from you on this as well. I tend to think perhaps these howls may generate a response of territoriality in most any creature, hence the response, but I could be wrong. Other sightings peer into a couple of other years, involving vacationers, hunters, and naturalists with their reports, adding to the lore of Mount Shasta and its inhabitant. 
This is one of the most common instances of Bigfoot sightings in the Mount Shasta area but, like so many others in California, they remain unreported. But for the believers, the intrigue that lies in the truth of these encounters is one where many have tried to find answers. Join us as we attempt to peel back the layers of myth and reality surrounding Bigfoot. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more mysterious content.